to take this motor out of this thing. I do like it. started pulling it apart we're going to drop the drive line now so I'll, uh, I'll chuck it on a time lapse take a little while just doing it by myself comes out from underneath so once I've got it out I'll uh, give you guys a look around on the trolley see how we go myself just because I can't have someone inside the car that's you know feeding things down or checking if things are failing or whatever when we're, I'm going up and down with the hoist but so we're able to get it done wasn't too bad I only hit my head about 42 times and lost about 20 litres of different fluids so I forgot we're in there um, but yeah she's out now so basically it's got to come out like this one whole kit uh, so motor bell housing with clutch torque tube, transaxle. 
Um, and then everything's hanging off the back because in this particular car, the transaxle has a mount um, that then mounts the suspension. Um, and obviously then your hubs and your brakes hang off that. Shocks are still hanging up in the car. Um, this setup runs a clutch up the front. Uh, some transaxles would have a clutch at the back. Turbo. Um, did a quick thing on the uh, dry sump the other day with the stanza. So here's a close look at this pump. So belt driven off the crank. Um, so basically you've got what, what we would call scavenge at the bottom. So this is where you pick up from the sump. So there's three pickups out of the sump. Oh, sorry. So there's two on that side, one around this side. So this is a fabricated sump from Allen Engineering. So there's three pickups there. Um, that scavenge pump here will then be pumping back um, out through the cooler and into the tank, the main reservoir. And on, on the end is the pressure pump. That's basically sucking from the tank. So there's your in and then pumping through the filter and into the engine. Um, and that gives you your full process there. So um, yeah, top mount turbo. Sort of a basic layout, this one, but it's a good motor. We're selling it, um, it's sold, it's going, so that's why it's out. So now I'm about to separate it from the, um, from the torque tube and just package everything up. Um, sort of a shame to get rid of this one because I have liked it. It's been super reliable. Uh, it's made good grunt. Yeah, it's been it's been a good motor. I'm going to miss it, but obviously we're swapping this out for a Chev. So this is the original Chev bell housing, um, and they just made up effectively a, a conversion sandwich plate, so that the Chev bell housing bolts to bolts to that, and then the SR bolts back the other direction. Um, so they were able to get that in, but otherwise it'll just all bolt back in with the Chev as it used to be, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, trans, this is going to get a big birthday, this whole everything, the whole car is, but um, everything back here as well will go down to PPG and K&A and, and we'll, we'll strip everything down. So I'll probably do a separate video on that and maybe have a look in the back here, um, show you guys inside a Trans, an old school Transaxle um, and how they work, pretty cool. Um, here's something funky. I mentioned this, I think, on the blend line video with the stands about the linkage. So, um, if you think it's tricky when you're trying to, you know, dog leg a, a shifter out of a normal box and get it to feel right, but imagine trying to sort this out. So, obviously, the shifters, um, the linkage is bolted to the torque tube in this one. That's got to come up through to where, it, you know, is accessible to the driver, and then it's got to run all the way down here. Got to join in here, and then it runs all the way through to the back. And then the way that this selects is by pushing or pulling and rotating sideways as well. So, you know, these can be pretty fiddly. To get all of this system working right and selecting bang on with, especially with, you know, real short throws and in a dog box where if you just jam the wrong gear, it will go in and then it'll just launch itself into next week. So, um, yeah, getting your linkage right is very important make sure you get them right um i'll go through this <coughs> chassis another day in detail once we've started stripping things down but that's where the motors come out of and the torque tube so motor up here torque tube ran down to the trans at the back torque tube makes part of the rigidity in this this is a monocoque so i'll go through that in more detail at another time um most annoying part was this was obviously designed for a cosy at the very beginning when it was built um early 80s and then it had the chev and then it had the sr and the issue here was that both inlet and exhaust can't stay on to get in and out the hole so i had to basically strip everything and then drop it out and then put it back together outside of the car so if you're uh if you're ever thinking about building a sports sedan especially if you're going to go mid mount or you want to be able to just drop the whole drive line underneath which i think is a great idea this it, it works it's good um just make sure your holes buddy big enough so you can just sort of leave everything as it is you know one plug on your loom and pop the whole lot out i made this trolley um i made it to suit deliberately to suit the drive line for the esky so it can just sit on that and i can wheel it around and then it just fits perfectly under there um when i don't have all the mess everywhere so yeah that's it uh next vid yeah we'll see what comes up next i'll just get into stripping this out we'll get this sr on the road 
to the new owner and then um, yeah and then we'll start stripping this thing down and getting into the resto. Awesome. See you later.